I'm gonna go ahead and do a static import for this map as well. So I'm gonna go here at static import, and then I'm gonna go ahead and copy this function, scroll down and paste it. So this is gonna go to the ping forward slash. And remember, we need some way to capture the IP address. So here I'm gonna say IP address. So we're gonna grab the IP address of the server that we're trying to ping. And I'm gonna change the name of the method as well. Name this ping server remove that S and here we have to pass in the path variable that we're grabbing in the URL. So for this, we're going to use another annotation called path variable, then give it the name that we're grabbing. In this case, that's the IP address. And then we're going to define this as a string, which is going to be IP address. And then what I want to do first is to see if I can ping the server. So we're going to do server, define the server here and then we're gonna call the service so service and then see if we can ping the server so we're gonna call the ping you can see it here and that takes the ip address so once we ping the server whether it's successful or not that doesn't really matter we're just gonna change the status of the server and as for our data we're just gonna return the server so i'm gonna change the key in the map to server and then pass in the server as the value in our map everything else is gonna be the same but the message is gonna be different so this message that we're sending back to the user this message is going to be different. So what I want to do is to check to see if the ping was successful or not. So I'm going to say server that get status and then check to see if it equals server up. So I'm going to do server up and then put a question mark. So I'm just checking to see if the status is up. If that's the case, then I'm going to say ping success. Otherwise, I'm going to say something else. Ping fail. And let's do a static import for that as well so that we can save some space. So the message is going to be ping success or ping failure, depending on what the status is at this point, because we know that after we ping the server, if the ping was successful, the status is going to be server up so that we can say, okay, if the server is up, then the ping was a success. Otherwise the ping was a failure because this is going to return false. So it's going to jump to this string. And we have to add the exception to the method signature. We can just do that here so that we don't have to use a track hatch block. And that's all we have to do for the ping. Let's go ahead and copy this one more time and then scroll up and I'm going to paste it down and I'm going to change this to a post request because this is where we're going to try to save a server and I'm going to change the URL as well to save. So it's going to be save and change this to save server. And inside of here, we're going to use the add request body because we're going to be sending the body and the request. I'm going to say request body. And I'm also going to use the valid annotation. So I'm going to say add valid. You can see that it's coming from Java X validation, which is the dependency that we add in. And then here we're going to say server and then we're going to give it a name of server. And I'm going to remove this exception because I don't think we're going to be using it and remove this line as well. And this is supposed to be post mapping. So we're going to grab the body of the request, which is going to contain the server. And we also put at valid, which is going to check for the validation that we added. So if I press control and go inside of the server, we're going to check for this annotation here, which is the validation. So let's go back. And what we need to do is to do something very similar that we've been doing. So if everything is successful, it's not going to be an okay response. So this is going to be created. So I'm going to change this to created and then do the same thing below. So this is going to give us the 201, which is the status for created. And we can go inside of this if we want. You can see that 201 is a successful response for created. So whenever a resource is created on the server, and that's what we're using here. And we can also use the created here. So if I do control space, you can see that there's a created that we can use as well, but that takes a URI and I want to be able to send a response to the user. So if we use the created, then we won't be able to send a response. There's another way we can do this by just returning a new response entity, and then we can fill in all the class information for the constructor. But the okay is also an unacceptable response for when something is created in the server. So I'm just going to leave it as okay, but you can do something else as well. So the time step is always going to be now. So whenever we're returning the response and here for the map for our data, we are also going to keep the server because we're going to return the server that got created. And here we're going to call the service. So we're going to say server service dot create, which is also going to return the server. And then we're going to pass it the server. So this is going to return the created server. And that's the server that we're going to pass in as part of the data to the response. And of course, the message is not going to be paying failure or success. It's going to be server create it. So something really simple. And this message can be anything you want. And you can also notice that we're not using the developer message or reason here because we're not dealing with any errors in this case. And that's all we have to do for this method.